It is the Matt Berry Show on the ESPN College Football YouTube channel. As always, Mullen and Matt on a Wednesday. Again, we brought the show on the road. Tulsa Temple, American Conference Open for both schools. Tomorrow night, Thursday night, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Big game. Yeah, yeah, but you know, when you get into conference play, what's so huge, the conference openers. Both these guys have played Power 5 schools. Uh, Tulsa here has played the toughest schedule in America. Oh have, have not played uh, Oklahoma, played Washington, yeah. played Northern Illinois even as a tough team last week. Uh, Temple coming off a tough loss to Miami. But when you get into these conference games, this is what it's about. This is what's important. Should be a great game here in Tulsa tomorrow night. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch E.J. Warner, Kurt Warner's son, son of a Hall of Fame. He'll be slinging it around the yard. We can't wait to kick off the college football week again, which we do uh, each and every Thursday. But some games I want to touch on here for our week three preview. There's some undefeated teams not ranked. Syracuse is one of them. They've got Clemson. Louisville is one of them. They've got NC State. There's a couple of teams out there that are unbeaten. Maryland is another one. They've got Indiana before Ohio State. When we get through the month of September going into October, how do you think some of those teams that have started off the season well aren't getting the ranking to the national attention? Well, I, th I think it's interesting. The teams you mentioned, I, I think Syracuse comes back to earth. And yeah. I know the Clemson issue, everyone talking about where's Clemson at? Are they, you know, are they, they it's just over. Their season's on the line. Listen, they still have talent. Yeah. They have players. They have a good defensive front. They play. They still have talent. I think the Syracuse run ends this weekend. Mm -hmm. I think Maryland will get through this week with another win over Indiana, yeah. and then it's going to start to come crashing down. They've got down. Ohio State. When Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan come rolling on. Yeah. The team that's interesting that, that's played above, that's undefeated, played above where I thought they would be at this point is Louisville. Yep. Of the teams you brought up. I, you, you know, you tune in, new coaching staff coming in, a little bit of a changeover, different things happening. Uh, you know, Jeff Brom wins. He, he, that's right. He, he wins and does a great job. And I watch them, and they 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 come out and they've dominated games mm -hmm. so far this year. I think they're a team that's going to continue to win, and they're going to make some they're going to make some noise as the year. Let goes me on. put it this way: contender or pretender in the ACC for them? Uh, you know how it's going. I you got to say contender. Yeah, you have to say contender. Jack know, Plummer's Florida, playing good at quarterback. Florida State's looked like they have some weak spots here and BC there. BC and Clemson successive weeks. You know, uh, my, Miami's looked yeah. pretty sharp. You know, Duke has got some great players, but you're like North Carolina and he, you know, I think Louisville can compete with all of those teams. Let's talk about uh, Duke for a second because for the first time in school history, football college game days come to Durham. Basketball goes there all the time because they'll tell you it's a basketball school and historically it's been. But Mike Elko has Duke off to an undefeated start 4-0. Here's the trick for Duke this week. Notre Dame comes off that last second loss to Ohio State. They've got the one loss. You're not in a conference. You're an independent. You can't lose again and still be in the college football playoff discussion. So Duke gets Sam Hartman and a Notre Dame team knowing that the season is on the line Saturday for them if they want to stay in the college football playoff conversation. Yeah, the pressure, really the pressure is Notre Dame. You yeah. know, if you look, but now they're backed in the corner. They're going to come out fighting, but the pressure's on Notre Dame. If they lose this, they're out of the discussion. Yep. They're out of the playoffs. They're not in a conference. Mm -hmm. right? So they're playing for a, a bowl bid at that point. Uh, Duke, this game is a fun game. No pressure. So it doesn't have any effect on them in the ACC and their run and their opportunity to go win an ACC title. So I think some of the pressure's off of Duke. Listen, Notre Dame's an excellent football team. Yep. They're, they're, they're balanced. They have it front to back. I, I was surprised last week how conservative they played that game. They really did. And they didn't let Sam Hartman throw the ball down the field. However, I think coming into this game, I, Notre Dame's going to be physical up front. They're going to have the size. But the one thing this Duke team does, mm -hmm. listen, Mike Elko teams play great defense. That's right. When he was a coordinator, now as a head coach. They're going to play defense. They're going to cause problems for that Notre Dame offense. And the thing that surprises you the most with Duke, Riley Leonard, we, we know that name. But you that he has, he has players around He's, him. Yeah. They have a lot of skill on that team. And I think that could be a shock for Notre Dame coming in. And I hope, you know, listen, I mean – I hope they're out doing the, you know, let's go Duke cheers <laughs> right. and all, and they get, they, they, they maybe put all the crazies around the field so that their students and the crowd and the atmosphere makes it a big time football score. If Duke gets this win to move to 5-0 and and they get Notre Dame, you could be looking at one of those special seasons in line because the ACC right now, Florida State looks good. Miami's undefeated. They look good. North Carolina. North Carolina's undefeated. They look good. So the ACC, at least for its part, without the powerhouse Clemson being in there is going to be a fun one as we turn the calendar to September or October rather in a couple of weeks. One other game I want to get into because I'm talking about with Notre Dame seasons on the line in terms of big picture conversation. That's also the case for Ole Miss. 
coming off the Alabama loss. They have a bounce back opportunity against LSU. Remember, LSU's only loss out of conference to Florida State. So if Lane Kiffin and the Rebels want to get back in it, you, you can't fall this week. This is a must win for them. Well, it is because, you know, you're, you go two losses. Loss, uh, you know, your two losses are Alabama, LSU. So you're three behind that. You're out of the you're, West. You're out, you're, there's no more chance to compete uh, for that West title. Um, listen, I think L Lane obviously – does a great job. He, you know, he gets players, puts yep. them in position. You know, they score points. Uh, they've played, you know, they, they play good defense. They're a good football team. But I'll tell you what, LSU, after that first game, they, you know, kind of, um, it, it's hard to say Florida State's good, but almost embarrassed Doesn't in that first game. Exactly. You know, it, it was one of those that, that was a wake-up call yep. to a lot of guys on that team. And I think that wake up call, like, has, has I mean, what, I mean, they have, it, it kind of, kind of got them angry. Well, Brian and Kelly said afterwards, we thought we're Georgia and we're not. Yeah, and they've but they've played that way. Yeah. They've played they've played great defense. Yep. They, you know, I mean, Jaden Daniels runs around, makes plays. They, I mean, Malik Neighbors, they have guys that can score from anywhere on the field. They run the ball. They look they look like the contender more than Old Miss has for me so far this season. Yeah, and, and LSU is clicking at the right time, and that's going to be good for them as they get into the meat of their conference schedule quickly. Colorado USC. Neither of us are calling for the upset. I don't think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be a lot of what we saw out of Oregon. But Colorado still continues to be the story in college football. And I'm wondering if after this week, if they pull off the upset, it would be a great story. But after this week, where are you big picture on Colorado? Because there's, there's so many opinions about this team. As a coach, where are you on that? Listen, I mean, hey, one, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders is doing an awesome job promoting no the question. program, promoting college football. It's great for college football. Yeah. I think he's doing an amazing job as a head coach. I think one of the things, and, and the problem comes, is it's it just seems so, everything's been an extreme. Yep. Is it was, hey, they came in, did a great coaching job, got a couple of great wins early. Yeah. They played a team, they got beat by a team that they should have gotten beat by, right. and they got beat handily, and they should have gotten beat handily by. And but I think it's it's everything has gone to such extremes. I think they're ahead of where he wants to be as a program. Yep. You saw last year they don't they're not going to have the depth. They're not going to have the size, physicality up at the line of scrimmage to go compete for championships at this point. I think it can come down the road. It's going to be interesting this week because a lot is going to happen. And you brought this up coaching wise. Okay? They're coming in USC last week. Did not look great they to did. me. They know State. they can score. Right. Okay, USC is going to come in and say, "Hey, this team just got embarrassed by Oregon. We're going to roll on them. We're USC. They're the up and comers. Just watch us come out there." I want to see. I don't know. I, I I don't know. Is USC to the point where they can just flip it back on after a bad performance last week for them? I would say USC is in that mindset of this has been our league forever. We're USC, we're the brand. You guys have been acting like that for the first month. We're going to show you who the brand is. I think that's going to be kind of the outcome of that one. Uh, but still, again, story of the September has been Colorado. It hasn't been close. We'll end it on this one. I've got an upset special for you this week. Keep an eye on South Carolina, Tennessee, and the Gamecocks getting the win over Tennessee. You're feeling that one. I'm, that, that is my upset Look out Coach Beamer alert. special is it special teams it's based a, or what's it gonna be? It's gonna be Legat, who was awesome, helmet sticker winner, and Spencer Rattler. I just think watch out for that one. That's my upset of the well, week. Well you get good Spencer Rattler, they can beat anyone. Forget it. So week five is here. Hard to believe we're embarking on the last couple of weeks of September for Dan Mullen on Matt Barry. The Matt Barry Show week five preview on the ESPN College Football YouTube channel. Give me something. I can't feel.